In one of the many attempts to prove God's existence through using a logical method, um, St. Anselm of Canterbury once proposed an ontological argument, which goes as follows. God is that than which nothing greater can be conceived. Um, premise two, God would be greater if existent in reality rather than in the mind. Therefore, we must conclude that God, who is the greatest conceivable being, exists in reality. So this is one of the most popular theological arguments that you would hear from someone using uh, historical philosophical references for evincing God. For those of you who haven't heard this syllogism before, it might seem like quite a drawing leap to the conclusion, but I assure you that this argument is valid. The problem, however, is that validity does not necessarily indicate actual truth. Anselm's ontological argument has been rebutted ad absurdum and is now quite outdated given that it was published around the 11th century in the, in the High Middle Ages. While it is a misconception that um, art and rational thinking ceased to be and superstition was instead rampant during the dark medieval times, um, there, there are still many factors brought up by others later in time which the saint failed to mention, one being that existence is not a predicate which makes something greater or lesser. Um, in asserting this, Immanuel Kant questioned the truthfulness of the argument's second premise, which would thus disprove what was initially concluded. Um, I know I'm mentioning Kant for the third video in a row, but he's, he's everywhere, you know. Um, there have been many more critiques of this logic but there were also even more over history who would improve on the ontology of God's existence. One of them was Rene Descartes, who I've um, who I mentioned when I was I was talking about rationalism. Uh, he developed his um, trademark argument, which goes like this: So everyone has a vivid and clear perception of the perfect and infinite being that is God within their mind. So this idea could not have been inspired by something less than perfect. Therefore, God must exist to give us this clear and distinct trademark of his existence within our perception. Okay, so the first premise is false. Honestly, it's really impossible to prove whether or not someone has a perception of God. Um, I, I think it's very likely that someone who was, for example, born in Buddhistic East Asia uh, could have gone their whole life without conceiving of God, um, at the very least not the Christian God. Um, so Descartes was raised as a Christian and in a pretty wealthy family, uh, his position in the European intelligentsia would kind of separate him from the realities of other cultures. Not to mention that there's also a informal, informal logical fallacy named after Descartes in reference to this argument, um, the Cartesian circle. Though I don't want to demean the philosopher's work at all. It is still still very profound and useful in most other cases. But there is a, a more modern ontological argument that I think could work a bit better. Um, it states, God is the greatest possible being. Um, a being is maximally great if it exists in every possible world or if it exists necessarily. Um, so there is a possible world in which God exists, and therefore 
God's existence is necessary in every possible world. So I could break down what I think about this argument as well. And don't get me wrong, I do like this one, but that's not what this video is supposed to be about. I'm not just here to disprove every possible proof for why God must rationally, logically, and scientifically exist. That would be frivolous because I, it wouldn't make me different from the plethora of skeptic channels already on this site. And that's actually already been done in this absurdly long 12 hour video that's um, really interesting and I, I can give a link to it if you're somehow if you somehow have the will to watch it but lastly because I have no belief in God's necessary existence so what's the point in me reiterating all of these arguments I've heard before if it won't change my belief. Something else Anselm said was that faith must precede understanding. These reasonings and conclusions are secondary when it comes to living faithfully. I know that no matter how many proofs I, I refute, this video won't change much about where you place your faith either. I do believe that there is always some kind of reason behind um, everyone's faith, but not always a logical one, and that's not a bad thing, that's simply how it is with humans. Because of our subjective perspective, we will see and believe things that do not in any way align with reality, and I would never claim I'm some exception to this, nor am I implying that our that the perspectives of those who see God are invalid, I'm only saying our perceptions differ. Note that I said it is God's necessary, not ultimate existence, in which I do not believe. I, I reject that the maximally great being needs to exist, which is my refute to the modern ontological argument, because while it is possible, it is also possible that there could be literally anything else in place of where most say that God is. The reason I introduced these arguments was to show that it is really one's faith in their feelings, not in their rational deductions, that convinces someone of what exists. The primary distinguishing characteristic separating secularists like me from devout fundamentalists is just personality. On what I said before, um, not only do these syllogisms not prove the Judeo-Christian deity, but calling what has been proven by these arguments God might be itself a bit of a stretch. Even the um, the well-known cosmological arguments, like those of St. Thomas Aquinas, defend, at best, some arbitrary cosmic dubro who got bored one day and just decided to cause the universe. This is where I exit the academic perspective for now and investigate why people believe in God on a personal level. A few months ago, I gave a kind of oration at my church that um, I will also attach a link to. In it, I discuss my journey through faith and how I was raised to believe one thing and ended up believing in something else. Um, this happens to everyone because of how powerful a force um, tradition or conformity is. I was quite honestly um, lucky to realize that my authentic understanding of the universe was not Christian at such a young age, when other people, usually due to experiencing more social pressure, are just too afraid to come out and express who they are and what they might actually believe. This is the unfortunate reality 
of a world populated mostly by um, those who subscribe to a doctrine intent on converting as many people as possible and by nearly any means, at least for some of the extreme followers whose actions are still kind of validated by the Bible. But aside from my rant on how individuality is more important than conformity, the reason I was inspired to make this video was from reading The God Who May Be, A Hermeneutics of Religion by Richard Carney. Um, I, I'm reading it with my old youth minister, and it was very complex. I'm not sure I completely understood everything he was trying to say, but one thing I did get through um, Carney's peculiar usage of tautology is that because God's being is possible, we must possibilize his possibility by loving and desiring his being so that his being becomes more possible than impossible. So this idea goes back to faith and reason. Um, it is clear that we can't really reason our way to God, or to the Christian God at least, because to us, the only way we can reasonably see him is through love, because God is love. But love is also a completely physical and natural thing, so a supernatural factor is still, in my opinion, unnecessary, at least considering that verifiable empirical evidence has um, virtually nothing to say about supernature. Um, I realize that I've only been referring to the Abrahamic religion for this whole video, and I'm sure this could be applied to most others as well. Christianity is just the one that I was taught and have studied, investigated, and um, considered my whole life, and yet there are those who have done nowhere near as much research as I have, which is okay and not necessary to, in order to be a real Christian. But I think the fact that I have more experience with religion than a lot of other believers, and I still don't see or feel God while they do, implies one of three things. Um, firstly, that God is conditional as to who he presents himself to, um, which is a very non-omnibenevolent thing to do, but there's also divine incomprehensibility, which is just too complicated to get into right now. Um, and then two, uh, God is indifferent to everyone. This is the deistic perspective. Um, you know, maybe he created the universe, but he stepped back and he doesn't care much for us anymore. And then lastly, the atheistic perspective, um, that God simply does not exist. So I'm somewhere in between points two and three because that's the faith which my experience of life gives much more reason to. Now this leads pretty well into existentialism, um, not because the philosophy supports an atheistic belief system, it is, it is still very concomitant with theistic religiosity, but because it deals with the fact that God might not exist, the statement that God is dead is just a reminder that his non-existence is a very clear possibility, and we have to be okay with that. The existence of God is like romance. In order to truly have a healthier life, you shouldn't put all of your life's meaning into something such as having this relationship with a partner. You should find this meaning from within yourself and be comfortable with who you currently are so that if you do happen to meet someone, it won't descend into a harmful state of codependence. Or if you don't, it won't descend into a severe depression. 
while it is nice to think about, it's not guaranteed that I ever will find such a partner, which is good because in reality, I don't need one in order to be happy. I can find happiness in my life um, that I live without having it gifted to me from an arbitrary cosmic dude bro. But um, please leave a comment if you have a response to these interpretations. In the meantime, I will be accepting my sentence to hell for trying to determine my actual beliefs through personal inquiry and embracing my authentic self.